Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen, 4-man run with uh, double enemy hit points, only ballistic weapons and permanent, many, many permanent dark events. We're at uh, 6 at the moment. Uh, today we're going to look into a great mission, a resistance operative mission, which allows us to get this engineer plus 72 intel. Intel is what we need at the moment because we want to expand and Edgar Alien Poe and Dark Tower Noxus are going to lead this mission to a hopeful a great success. So let's jump directly into it without further ado. We are looking at a great uh, yeah, extraction mission uh, of uh, an operative, uh, the engineer. It's going to be fun, although I'm a bit afraid because it's kind of the two, uh, two to three missions after we <coughs> visited the Black Side facility window. And that means we might um, find the Archon King, the alien ruler, in this mission, or we could find another chosen. If it would be a chosen, it would be the sniper. So I'm not, uh, I'm not particularly afraid of him. But the Archon was really, really difficult. Great. So let's take a look. Firebrand is standing by, but be careful. We'll have limited opportunities to set up a viable extraction point down there. Nice. Okay, so I can already see that we're having like this long drawn out train. And this here seems to be like the train wrecking station. If it is really the train wrecking station, then this would be great. I think it is because uh, there's like the silhouette of the, uh, of the of this um, uh, the train uh, a part of the train that's currently being repaired. If that's the case, then uh, this territory is wonderful for a firefight. So much high and low cover um, at the at the same time over multiple dimensions like it's really a 3d almost um, fighting ground i highly enjoyed it when i was playing uh, when i was playing it uh, and this this typical model of this room is uh, very satisfying to fight it so if i'm right we're going to have a great firefight Tough things get down here. We can't evac until we complete the mission. Okay. We do have a very, very tight um, window for extraction. Like the whole call, um, call Sky Ranger only works if we have our target. It's pretty tough, so it means we need to deal with whatever is down here. It's kind of a one-way, uh, one-way ticket. I'm wondering if I should have brought Edgar and Poe with us because one-way tickets is usually something where I don't want to take the prime, um, the prime characters with us. So here's where the train ends in. Yeah, I was right. This here is the train uh, train wrecking station. That's really, really great. Um, and somewhere here uh, is probably an entrance to the site. So we're going to split up and have like one uh, group over here and another one like approaching it from here. So in terms of splitting up, I think you might want to consider Moving out. taking. Oh, hello, hello there. We might want to consider taking our um, taking our grenadier in our assault into a position uh, together, and taking the sniper and our specialist into a position together. So here's the thing. Our assault has double moved, but oh no, we don't have threat assessment. Ah, never mind. I was about to consider giving him threat assessment. So instead let's catch up with these guys. 
And see if they maybe walk into our direction. Nice. Very good. Pack of two. That's a great start. We want to get the priest first due to the issue of potential mind control. And we're going to take the um, the shield bearer second. So let's set up a proper overwatch, shall we? Which is the gunner here gets eight protocol. Then we're overwatching. We're overwatching with our grenadier. That's going to be like the classical overwatch trap. Three guys are overwatching and we're going to use lightning hands just to start it off. There we go, six points of damage. We're being revealed. And the movement triggers. Okay, well, that wasn't too bad. Oh, wait a second. So we why ah oh, so this guy take a shot and then even move further back. That's interesting. Good, let's continue to harass the Advent Priest to be honest. There we go, nice. Pretty solid damage. Advent Priest's almost down, which means if we're now going to see a mind control, that's uh, not going to um, hurt us all too much. There's the resist, by the way. Thanks for having the plus willpower modules. There's the extra hit points. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Very solid first fight. We don't have any timer here, so that's uh, why I'm less concerned in, uh, in uh, playing it fast. I rather prefer to play it the right way. Half cover and full cover. Mm. So that's only forty percent chance to hit him. We could use one of our grenades, but I really prefer not to do that yet. Let's instead try to see if we can soften up this guy. Nope, we can't. And since we haven't been able to soften him up, he still has three armor, which means we're not going to uh, to rush him down yet. We have a couple of solid shots here for uh, for our uh, for our guys. We just need to be careful that we're not um, that we're not standing too close together. This here is a better position uh, for cover. Unfortunately, we can be flanked from here, so I'm not going to take it. Instead, let's reload and take down the Advent Priest. Yeah. Too bad. Really low shots uh, for the Priest, but if you, if you have like three or four to spare, then it actually makes sense to continue using it before getting into a really bad position. And taking shots onto him is also not too bad. Because the shield that he currently has on him is not reduced. Um, if he has shielding points, like the temporary hit points that he has, it's it's not being reduced by, um, by his armor. So in other words, yeah, they would be... Uh, they would be treated as if he would have zero armor on him. Okay, let's shortly take a take a moment to reposition. This guy moved in here, which tells me that there's another pack here. I don't want to just like run in. Uh, there we are. 
Again, unsuccessful. I mean, we could do an aggressive grapple to here, but I think that would be, like, just simply stupid. We don't know who's in there, so might as well take the full, full cover instead. And uh, do a bit of a pistol overwatch. Alright. There's the first shot. And oh, that was... Oh, nice. That was an execution. Great. Not only did we hit him with an overwatch, we also executed him. Pretty good. I like it. Let's heal Noxus up. He's uh, conveniently taken five points of damage and with five points healed. Let's kind of evening it out again, I suppose. We are now going to go into a bit better position. On Overwatch. Overwatch. Oh, hello there. So a couple of things. Number one, we saw that there's an Archon. Currently there's another pack up there. Not sure why the Archon is alone. Normally an Archon is never alone. Normally an Archon is never alone. Oh, there we go. It's a pack. All right. I'll take a very short break, guys. Um, I need to sort something out in real life. Be right back in 30 seconds. All right, back. Apologies for the pause. I know that that's always inconvenient. Thank you for staying with me. So one of the things um, that I just uh, thought about is um, the reason why I don't like to go into this um, this particular module is, is so like the train repair station. They always have high ground, right? So that's the first thing that we really need to um, take care about to even the playing field a bit, which means we're definitely going to like hit all three of them, remove cover and remove armor. Uh, before doing so, let me reload. 
because we are using our actions optimally. Uh, don't ever waste an action if possible. And this here should hit all three of them, deal damage, and first and foremost, uh, remove armor. The shield bearer, who's sitting on top there, is actually going to take some falling damage on top of it. There you go, two extra falling damage. And we're going to save that flashbang grenade because I want to make sure that the, uh, that the stun lancer uh, is not uh, going to be in a position to effectively run at us and hit someone unconscious. That would be very, very bad. So we're starting with a protocol uh, for Noxus here. He's going to hold his ground. And let's focus on the stun lancer first. This guy really needs to be killed this round. Very solid 8 damage. Good job, Noxus. I absolutely love it. Um, and yeah, at Galleon Po, we do have an issue because you have no line of sight, which sucks. I mean, on the other hand, this here is a wonderful uh, spot to, to be at. So I am considering, since he has so much movement, whether we should just literally let him move over here somewhere. He's, he doesn't have enough movement to go up to here. This here would be a nice spot, but it has no line of sight. Hmm. I mean, we can, we could let him move in. I don't want to go any closer because there's a high chance that there are more enemies inside. He currently has like zero visibility. If he would stay like here, that would give him some sort of visibility up here, but that's also a very dangerous spot to be in. Someone could just move here and flank him. It's high ground, but it's highly dangerous high ground. Just double checking where he would have good line of sight. I mean, most of this here would give him line of sight to one of, the, uh, one of them, but not both. And I think in the absence of having good options, I would say we're just going to overwatch for now and like I was saying earlier, a good flashbang grenade could really save the day here. Reload, so we're okay and the flashbang grenade will prevent us from like significant harm. It's a high value flashbang grenade, there we go by the way. Nice little six points of damage. We had a chance to execute this guy with the sniper. Double movement. He's going to go back and probably, yeah, he used his uh, he used his shield. You know what wonders? Uh, what makes me wonder? Like he was moving back in order to use the shield, right? That's very atypical. I was about to say, yeah. Normally that means that there are more enemies. That's kind of the the standard in this situation. So again, a lot of cover here. If we were to blow it away, this would be our preferred scenario. Which would literally take take away most of the cover. And we need to kill the Sun Lancers first. Alright, we're out of grenades now, which means uh, from now on, moving forward, uh, we kind of need to pull it off on our own. So we could move over here, very solid spot for Noxus.
basically starting to rest this guy. Okay, perfect. Now, as for... As for Ed Gallian Poe, I mean, we could move him up to here, but that would be, I think, a bit extra uh, extravagant. There he would see everyone. We would need to have a proper place where he can see most of them. Up here is great. So we're back to this whole how does he get up there scenario. He really has a long, um, a long uh, reach with his movement, so might as well just let him be pulled up here. With the grappling hook that should solve the case. Yeah, he can move up to here. There we go. Edgar Allan Poe in a very solid position, and now it's time to really harass these guys. Make sure that all of them are uh, going to take a lot of damage. Face off. Okay, perfect. That was some very, very solid damage. Could move up to here. 84% could move up to here but that provo uh, that kind of suggests that grenades should uh, be thrown into this direction we could actually stand here as well I mean 84% is not bad he's in the open there is a 50% chance to actually crit him so there's a there's a solid chance of 50 I would say almost 50% well half of 84% so there's a 42% to instantly kill him and a very high chance to uh, to severely injure him we could move further um, to here to increase the chance of hitting the only thing I'm afraid about is I don't want to pull another pack that's that's really my main concern so we're going to stay here and let's kill the stun lancer well, it was a crit, but unfortunately minimum damage crit, so we're looking at one hit point, which is kind of the worst thing that could happen to you. Blazing pylons is fine. It's moving over. These two guys need to move next turn. That's okay. That's going to be a shot. No, an overwatch, which is also okay. The Stun Lancer is the only one that really scares me. And that guy missed, so perfect. Very good! We're back in the game, guys. Matter of fact, the only one that needs to move is Edgar Alien Poe. And let me tell you, this Advent Shield bearer here needs to get his Overwatch removed. There we go. Overwatch removed. Edgar Allan Poe needs to move. And one place where we can move him is basically here. Which is a pretty solid kind of in-between space. We're anyways using his pistols more. So... It doesn't matter that his sniper rifle is out of ammunition. Okay, that worked out well. Stun Lancer's down, Dark Tower has killed him. I'm of course asking myself how do we want to deal with the Archon. We have two guys in full cover. It's never a good spot to be in. But we also have an Archon up here.
So let's move up and try to basically harass the Archon a bit more. 60% chance for some solid damage. There we go. Good job. So going forward, one of the topics that we could do is we can suppress uh, this Advent Trooper. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Oh, seriously? Dark Tower uh, t uh, took some damage, although he was not even... Oh, wow. I call that bullshit, because he was uh, standing behind a pillar. But yeah. By the way, interestingly enough, the Archon stood in his own blazing pillars and took damage from all four of them. He's down to 12 HP for being like a stupid retard and, <laughs> and standing in the middle of all of it. That was really bad. All right, Edgar Alien Poe. You can arrest him with a pistol, that's fine. Noxus heals himself. I think he still has a strong position. We just need to get rid of the Archon. There we go. First hit. Five points of damage. That's good. I think we're now going to finish him with the pistols. Just to make sure that he's going to die. No, no not reload. Pistol and kill. Larian Core is good, advanced laser side not so much. I have it. All right, here we go. Moving in. Very nice slash. I think we're just keeping our positions, to be honest. Ah, too bad. Well, they can deal a bit of damage, but I'm pretty sure they won't uh, completely hurt us. We're still in half cover, mostly. And they haven't managed to really break it. Uh, matter of fact, they went out of their full cover into pretty bad spots, in my opinion. There we go. Overwatch removed. And it's only one person left in half cover. Again, we, we don't want to stress it too far. I really want to play it safe. So taking 50-50 shots is nothing... Oh, well, never mind. I was about to say taking 50-50 shots is nothing to be ashamed of. Specifically if you have the upper hand. Overwatch, Overwatch. Okay, let's recap. We had a pack with a shield bearer and a priest, It's which is that. And we had an add-on pack uh, with an Archon and uh, two further guys, which is also dead. And we had yet another pack with... I think it was a Stun Lancer and... Uh, uh, and... and uh, Normal Trooper, which is also dead. So three packs dead. I think since it's called very hard, there are about three to four more packs. We do have high ground here. We do have non-usable high ground here. And that's our uh, prime uh, prime target. So let's get into a position where we do have proper where we do have uh, proper angles, and then take it from there. Okay. Gosh. 
How about our cooldowns? Any cooldown that we would need to use? No, I think every cooldown is ready, so might as well continue. Is it clear? Is it clear? This open hall and the breach that we're now doing, like getting into here, is one of the most difficult parts about the map. You can see that there's... And let me talk about why I personally love that so much. It's just an extremely dynamic environment. Like you do have a lot of high ground spots here for uh, grappling maneuvers. They are like just in the right distance to to make these uh, maneuvers. You do have high ground here. You do have a significant high ground here. You have a significant high ground here, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six entrances. Maybe even one back here. I don't uh, I don't know about that all too much. But, and you do have um, a very nice mixture of low and high ground. So whoever designed that map, big kudos. I really, really appreciate it. It's a good example of how to design a proper XCOM map, in my um, humble opinion. Plus, it's thematically just very, very good. I like it. This whole like uh, train station uh, theme. Very nice. We unfortunately don't have uh, restills because uh, that would be the perfect moment in a uh, in uh, All right, I'll go. in our uh, tactic to to really restills. I'm taking my time now because there is no uh, timer for us, but I am pretty sure there could be another pack. There could be another pack. Not directly here, but there could be another pack, there could be another pack, there could be another pack. There are just a lot of typical spawn points for packs. On Overwatch. To Overwatch. Got it covered. And this here is way too quiet. I don't hear any movement. Oh shit. Seriously? You must be kidding me. Oh no! You guys realize who this uh, who this dude is, right? That's the alien ruler. Oh my gosh! I'm not so miffed about his friend, uh, the other Archon. I couldn't care less, to be honest. Oh, so he's going to flee at probably half of his hit point, sixty to fifty, uh, or if we can kill him earlier than that. What I'm currently seeing though is well, that's going to be a very very hard fight for us. Um, Overwatch would, would provoke um, reactions from him. Any sort of movement provokes reactions from him. Our main option to kill this guy is to effectively uh, execute him. Elsewise, it's just making sure that we hit him faster and harder than he can hit us. The last time we had an uh, we had an uh, we had a scapegoat, our uh, our stun lancer could be kind of killed by this guy. This time we don't have it. So we need to. A bit count on the uh, on the option to to kill him right away with an execute. All right, let's move out. We're moving over here. This means that we're going to have one person being hit. There we go. Stun for one round. Oh my god. Like I was saying, this is going to be really 
who can kill whom faster. There's no point in going into uh, going for cover. He's anyways like going to take uh, take up different guys. Only thirty percent chance to hit this guy. Wow. That's going to hurt. I think it's nine points of damage. It's only four points, but disorientation. Watch the flanks. They're moving. Hit bad. Eleven points critical. Okay, nice. Well, that's uh, pretty bad. What's his chance to execute someone? It's a normal repeater. Okay. It's his chance to execute someone. That's an advanced repeater, so we're going to stick with the advanced repeater. Mainly because we need to get this guy killed. Of course, that doesn't work if we're missing him. Dark Tower here has a very low chance to hit him as well, but he has a repeater. Well, at least everyone's consistent and sucks in actually hitting the others. 50% chance, come on. That's an advanced repeater as well. Oh my gosh, how could we miss every single shot? At least he's burning now, so he takes some sort of damage. We're going to Overwatch. Another 7 points of damage. Interestingly enough, this guy hasn't yet acted. So let's take a shot. 50 50. He's burning, so there is no chance for him to melee attack, which is actually pretty good. Seventy percent. Oh, Lord, thank you. Solid execution. Well, hello. Good work out there, people. I am eager to begin examining the subject as soon as we can get it back to the lab. We might as well. Let's get the fuck out of here with his uh, with her four hit points. As I have no intention of trying to replicate them myself. <laughs> so close. Reload. Overwatch. And for him. 8 hit points. Wouldn't necessarily say that that's um, kind of the most hit points that you could have. So let's get a bit back. Blazing pylons. I think he's going for blazing pylons. It's too far away for a melee attack. Yeah, there you go. I'm a bit afraid that we can't see him. Well, that makes me wonder. So let's run and gun. We're going to Overwatch trap him. Solid copy. Moving over here. And Overwatch. So, as for the healing... <laughs> wow. We are going to double uh, heal. 
just to make sure that everyone's out of the absolute critical zone. We're out of healing. Another overwatch, by the way. And last but not least, that Galleon Poe with another overwatch. However, he managed to get back there. I absolutely don't know. But we do have three overwatches. Let's get closer to this guy. Edgar's moving up. It's time to pen uh, punish this fool. One down. Two down. And three down. Nice little crit there. Next up, 8 protocol on gunner. We're not taking um, cover for Edgar and uh, Dark Tower. A, they do have enough hit points, and B, there is really no point. This guy could still move behind us and hit us. However, with those who have less hit points, it's a worthwhile exercise to really go for full cover. Shit. Okay, so... Let's move him back. No need to sacrifice someone. At Galleon Poe is going to tank it. With his suit, he has 20% extra dodge, so. There's actually a pretty realistic chance that he's not going to take any damage. There we go. Continuing to punish uh, the Archon. It's almost down. We're pretty much out of ammunition. Can't slash him. Let's do an overwatch. It's down to one HP. Luckily for us, he misses. Edgar's finishing the job. Okay. Whew. Little bit of a breather, guys. Now I do understand why the mission difficulty was rated as very difficult. Whew, we killed the Archon. Not the little Archon, we killed the Archon Lord. I think that was a pretty, pretty important uh, execution. But for those of you who might think, well, so lucky with the executes. No, 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 no. This guy here already took, I think, 12, if not more, shots, if you consider the last mission and this mission together. So, purely statistically, he should have been dead already. Uh, what's over there? Scanning. Moving to Overwatch. Come get some. By the way, just wow in terms of how many enemies we're uh, we're facing here. Edgar Alien uses his grappling hook once again. I can't stress enough how how extremely good I think the this armor is. Like he's so fast. Look at that. 
I think we're going to use him to extract uh, the guy and uh, the rest of the squad is going to stand here and is going to use uh, to, to give us some cover. Alright, let's give a round of reloading and let's uh, and also getting the cooldowns back. No need for a hurry up. Yeah, there's no more aliens left, otherwise we would have uh, seen an alien movement. Which means we can open the door. We go. Edgar is moving in. Looks like they called in some friends. And there are the Oh wow. VIP identity confirmed. Hold the position until the evac arrives. Well contacts closing on your position. It's an ambush. Hold your ground. I guess we might want to either go into high ground or leave this position here. Four turns until extraction. Which means we can also spend the four turns basically running away from the center of um, center of their reinforcements so considering if uh, this here is the VIP how far he could go if we were to like move back there's still a lot of uh, room from here to move back. I'm thinking about whether or not we do fight or flight. There's a pretty decent uh, runway until the end of the corridor here. We can pull most of the fights into this area, which is actually not too bad. Um, so yeah, let's try that. VIP starts to move out. Edgar Allan Poe uses yet another grapple. To get into a proper position. This here looks great. I'm just thinking, I mean, we're in between uh, two, uh, two drop spots. I might as well want to consider really All right, I'll go. going back. Full cover. If you say so. And since they are dropping, they will not be able to take shots at us, but we will be able to take shots at them. So let's see what they drop. A Viper. It's 20 hit points and a Codex. Oh, well, the Codex is bad. Oh, a Mutant. Oh, shit. Okay, it's not fight or flight. It is flight or flight. All right, Codex moves first, hopefully. Yep, Codex moves first. And unfortunately, we only hit him partially because the Codex, with our blue screen rounds, we would be able to actually kill the Codex. These guys here are super strong. Codex clones himself. And there's the next... 
bit of reinforcements. Gosh, that's going to suck. All things considered, diagnosis, this is going to suck. There's one codex back here. We need to get further and further back. Is it clear? So it's mostly really moving out of the line of uh, sight of whatever is going to join us here. Put it down. Problem is they have so many hit points that it's very very difficult for us to to get rid of all of their hit points. Is it clear? Moving further back. VIP by the way. Fully moves back through the door into full cover. Um, his position isn't too bad, and Edgar can move quite far. He can kill the Codex. If we were able to kill the uh, the Viper, it is. Equal odds on the Codex and the Viper. This here could also be a Codex kill. For the Viper, it's only 5 to 7 damage. So I suppose uh, let's try to kill the Codex first and then go for the Viper. Codex done. So hitting it is seven to nine. Since we have uh, activated run and gun, we might just go there. Hitting it now is 6 to 8, but a 50% crit chance. Uh, 7 to 9, 20% crit chance. I mean, the 50% crit chance is really tasty. It almost helps us to, to kill this guy. In this turn already. So there's the first uh, hit. Very good. There's the second hit. No, we missed it. Too bad. Alright. If we were to deal with maximum damage and crit, we would be looking at 12 points of damage. Won't be enough to kill it. The slashing won't be enough to kill it. So, we're pretty much in a bad spot here. However, we could um, hope for an execute. What was a crit? And we got it down to 5 HP, which by the way would have been as much as the pistol shot would have dealt. I hope that the Viper is going to go for a bind, so she's, uh, she's not going to use uh, her poison uh, spit.
Yep. It's going to be three to four damage. No, two actually only. It's not bad. Yeah, I can't move. By the way, the flashbang grenade would be extremely uh, useful now in this situation. And even more uh, reinforcements are going to arrive. Well, sometimes when it rains, it pours. And that is one of these times. Let us actually kill the Viper, please. Are you serious? We're talking about one damage. Ithgael and Poe uh, will continue to stay here. Uh, they will uh, come uh, and join him up here. I mean, well, it's just a matter of time. Like this, uh, these uh, one of these will uh, flank him. However, he uh, is in a good position, and I'll give him the aid protocol. With face off, we will draw the attention of everyone onto Edgar Elian. Let's also kill the Viper, of course, which I was intending to do earlier, anyways. So Edgar takes the aid protocol. Pretty solid defense now. Next up, we're going to harass this trooper. Fortunately, we're not successful with that. Uh, what's over there? Going into full cover. Moving the VIP even further into cover, I'll bring down. And yeah, we need to get him out of uh, out of the action. It's unfortunate, but with four hit points and no way to heal, there's only so much that he can do. A couple of shots. So we have this flank here, a bit better under control. Got the mechanical unit now. Which could die even fast as well. We have absolutely no control over all of these guys. They are just like incredibly strong. Our quote unquote control is to have someone in full cover like Edgar with a suit that gives him plus 20 um, uh, defense and. With a suit that gives him plus 20 defense, and on top of that, um, uh, having all of them like bound to him. That was interesting, he was blocking the ladder, so no one can get up. Edgar's spot is getting tougher and tougher. I'm not 100% sure how we're going to to go on with that. Probably we would need some sort of a grappling maneuver to get out of here. Yeah, there, there we go. That's going to be the solution. Probably one more round until we get him out of there. For now. Move everyone back. And try to kill whomever we can kill. Gunner here is in a tough spot as well. I 
We need to be far, far away from everyone. Do not take hits. Good, this should this should uh, secure him. We only have this round under the extraction. I hope it's worth it. Dark Tower will hunker down uh, to make sure that he's uh, that he's not taking any uh, further burning damage. And I'm thinking I could do a nifty maneuver, like, look at that. So if we hit this, um, I actually have a good idea. So currently, we're still the center of attention of everyone, right? With Shadowfall, if we kill uh, the uh, Purifier, we will go for concealment, so they will no longer know that we're here. Which means that Galleon Pole no longer is a valid target. That means these guys will move on. We're so far away that they need to double move. Edgar has an option to uh, to get out of uh, there. So let's hunker down. The only thing that I haven't fully considered in my plans was the fucking VIP. Who's somewhat behind enemy lines and that's never a good place for a VIP to be at in the first place. Yeah, that here would have been his spot. Shame on me for taking away his prime spot. So VIP stays into half cover uh, in half cover then. I have eyes on the enemy. Is he going to take shots? Yeah. Suppression. Double movement. Yeah, a lot of them are now going to double move. Another double movement. They are confused. They know that there's someone up there, but they can't really, like, get a grasp. Lots of wasted actions from the enemy now. More hostiles inbound. Firebrand is in position for the extraction. Get out of there before things get any worse. Are you shitting me? This is the extraction zone. Uh, zone? Oh, very convenient, right? In the middle of fucking nowhere. Oh my god. Ugh. So. Well, we clearly need to survive yet another round. Not the VIP though. This guy can already get out of here. They are already overrun by those damn things. I don't even know what you're talking about, mate. You make it somewhat sound as if they wouldn't be overrun by these damn things. We're completely and 100% utterly out, uh, outrun, overrun, outclassed. Suppression removed and revealed ourselves, by the way. What's over there? Moving and hopefully injuring him. Very good. Because now. We 
could kill this guy. But we are open for an attack from here. Well, there's a full cover so you can't see us right away. Oh, we have him play, uh, placeable. I forgot about that, which is great. I got it, right? So that was pretty, pretty good. Just need to find a place where okay, we're not the center of attention. This here looks quite good. Now, you certainly are the center of attention here. And I think we might continue to do that. We will also continue to arrest the mutant over here. So that Galleon Poe is basically going to draw all of the attention. Oh wow. Now it's just getting silly. Four guys in a... Oh, in a... in a drop. Well, it's just silly. That's just stupid. Ooh, lucky us. That would have been lethal, most likely. Yeah, that's going to be a hit. Well. I can't move! We've picked up a lull in their forces. It looks like they're running out of reinforcements. Let's get moving before that changes. Looks like they are running out of reinforcements. Is that really just a statement? Whatever. Okay, so first things first. Free action, lightning hands. Let's just remove one of the overwatch shots. Okay, there we go. That's good. Second uh, topic. Let's move over here. Nice little grappling hook that will provoke one at, uh, one overwatch shot. All right. Next up, we move down here. It can basically be extracted now, just because I don't like the mutant. Here's yet another pistol shot, and Edgar is out of here. be very clear everyone's out of here now I'm out, of here. out of here out of here out of here thank you <laughs> such a close mission oh my god These extraction missions are brutal. We almost didn't manage to kill the the alien ruler, let alone the ex, uh, the extraction mission. Advent would like to assure all citizens that despite recent attacks and loss of life attributed It's such a good joke um, to put the extraction zone right back into the middle of it. Glory, honor, victory. Well, that was a close call. I would put luck on the uh, core traits of XCOM as well. 
glory, honor, victory, but also a bit of luck. So Dark Tower gets threat assessment finally. Good job, buddy. Really awesome mission. You kicked them. And he's now captain. And I'm really thinking about getting uh, holo targeting. Because against enemies with uh, so many hit points, one more grenade is great, don't get me wrong. Holo targeting is great as well. Having successfully recovered one of Dr. Valen's Archon King's corpse, yes. I am eager to begin conducting an autopsy as soon as possible. It is my hope that by following her own research notes, I will gain an even greater understanding of just how she managed... Negative trait. Fear of the Chosen, Fear of the Chosen. Uh, that was from the last, uh, from the last sabotage mission. I just was displayed now. Okay, wow. Ooh. 80 more days for powered armor, and right after that I'd like to go for the Icarus armor, because that's pretty pretty good. Avenger plotting new course. We have three more days for supply drop, so might as well just uh, really a quick make contact here um, because we don't even need to fly there uh, making contact is instant for us thanks to the continent bonus uh, thanks to the uh, resistance operations so we upgraded our contacts to eight uh, to ten which means making contact here will be instant And one of the things the local resistance we just established contact with have sent over all the intel Yeah, we, I I knew that the warlock would be eventually coming. So, you would come to strike at me. I eagerly await your arrival. I'm not afraid of uh, him. He's he can be nasty, but I think we're going to be fine. Um we will build a resistance um, tower here pretty soon. And that would allow us to get West Asia, um, East Asia, even Indonesia. Like, that's a pretty, pretty good spot uh, for a low amount of intel. Nice. So good. Training center. Okay, guys. This is like Eastern and Christmas at the same time. I was waiting for that a long, long time. This will allow our soldiers to train together to improve their bonds while also putting the knowledge they've gained in combat towards learning new abilities. Alright. Improve soldiers' bonds is something that I would want to do, but at the moment um, all of them are on the sick bay. However, let's take a look what uh, what the guys would get. And let's please hope for, uh, for good uh, abilities. So Edgar Alien Poe uh, gets Volatile Mix, which is shit. Uh, he gets Ever Vigilant, which is extremely good. I like it, so that's a good one for a sniper. Fully moving and still getting your Overwatch. And that here is great as well. Not triggering Overwatch and Reaction Fire. That's really, really good. I love it. And we got extra, uh, extra ability uh, points for him as well. Um, that's from above will be pretty uh, pretty good um, considering that uh, that we are uh, that we're maybe getting the unique arrival of the hunter sometimes so that's good I like it before we spend any points though let's go on Roby nice run and gun so good implacable oh so good as well both of them are a kick ass together and death from oh. Roby, you're going to be a monster in this series. Death from above, killing an enemy at a lower elevation for him will be huge. It will allow him to almost have like a mini serial. If we play that right, he will always regain actions. So that's really, really good. Let's take a look at um, Ranven here. Commander, 
each of our soldiers is raided based on their understanding. Nice. Redmond just got rapid fire so and cereal. <laughs> Alright, it's on. We got the we got the right abilities. We got the right abilities. We got the right ability. Star Tower, Rapid Fire is pretty good, and Serial, wow, that's awesome as well. That's pretty good. Another Serial here with uh, with our uh, Gunner. And Rupture, which by the way I think is uh, one of his core traits anyways. Oh no, Re Rupture was from the um, from the Grenadier. Yeah, Rupture is pretty good in this game mode. Oh gosh. What does she get? Um, squad side? That's not too bad. Tactical rigging is good for her. Dead Eye sucks. I was hoping for Shredder. Um, that's bad. Uh, that's, uh, that's a big miss. Face Off is wonderful for him. So yeah, lots of training. Uh, before we, I mean, before we go to the next mission, I'd like to use our, well, we can do it right now. So using the soldiers uh, action points uh, kind of is a no-brainer. We can always do that. And I really like the idea of giving him shadow step because there is so much, uh, so many times when you need to reposition, or specifically with the grappling hook, and not triggering attacks, uh, attacks uh, from the enemies is huge. I like the death from above as an extra um, ability. I also like um, ever vigilance, so I'm pretty torn in between these here. Um, as for the others, um, I mean, he will get a couple of good ones, Serial and Fanfire at Kernel, so we might want to s save some points uh, for that. Both of them are really, really good. So for now, I guess uh, with him, let's go for Shadow Step or Death from Above and leave it there and save the rest of the points. Uh, by thinking about both of it, maybe Death from Above in terms of getting extra actions is really a bit better. Just a tiny bit. Having Shadow Step is good as well. No, we're going for Death for, from above, specifically with the extra option for Rifle. So that's him. Roby, that's difficult because Roby has so many really good uh, abilities. He also has normal abilities. Haywire Protocol is great. Um, uh, scanning Protocol is great uh, to counteract the, uh, the Chosen and chrysalids whenever they come, but run and gun is supreme, it's just an extremely strong ability and implacable is also very 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 strong um, because it allows you to aggressively move in, kill someone and then aggressively move out again. So I think as for now the most important one is Haywire because it offers you to control robots and that's pretty good. Um, I think afterwards, and we can spend some points on to Roby because it's it's really really good. Like the Death from Above ability for him will also be nice for extra um, action points. He doesn't have any similar ability yet, so let's start with the Death from Above ability. And I think we're going to finish with Implacable. Yeah. We still have some points left over, that's fine. Um, Renman. Oh boy, so many good abilities. I mean, Rapid Fire, I don't even need to, to tell you like how great Rapid Fire is. Holo Targeting, I just talked about it, which is good as well. Not even good. In this game mode, it is really, really good because it allows everyone to have a plus 15 against the target um, and it, it, with rapid fire together, it's really, uh, it's it's also really nice. Um, blast padding, just to increase the survivability. I was talking about that earlier. 
So all of these three immediately resonate with me. Uh, Serial looks great on paper, but here's the deal. Uh, they have so many hit points that we're not just like uh, killing them one, 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 one. Uh, so Serial will trigger much less in with double um, enemy hit points. The rapid fire will be good always. So we're going to start with rapid fire because it's by far one of the best abilities in the whole game. Like, period. And... I would still consider giving him both holo targeting and blast petting, although it costs us some good uh, good points because that increases survivability and that increases the effectiveness of the whole team quite substantially. So the only one missing now is Zirkim, and once he's back, we're going to look at him as well. I would not want to spend any team points on uh, the others. So we're looking for individual soldier action points. Noxus here has a lot of them. Uh, so for Noxus, I mean, rapid fire is great, Haywar, uh, but rapid fire costs 25 points. Uh, so for Noxus, maybe we're going with a combination of Haywar protocol and scanning protocol. That could be one of the things. Haywar is really good for him, and scanning is something that offers a lot of utility. So probably this year's 23 points together, and together both of the abilities are better than rapid fire. Um, and it's from his personal um, AP. Slinger! I like it. I mean, chain shot, brutally efficient with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, the uh, sniper. Something that you that we might want to consider just to to give him that. I like the death from above uh, as well. Could consider death from above in dead eye. Hail of bullets is not bad either. I mean, it removes cover, so I guess. By thinking about it, I mean Death from Above in Hail of Bullets. The Hail of uh, he's using a lot of his pistol anyways. Death from Above um, will help him with the sniper rifle to get this extra shot in. And this here is cover removal. So um, let's actually get both of uh, both of uh, these because cover removal is always good. And this here is extra actions. So you can see I'm just trying to always go for extra actions or some sort of uh, utility uh, that we. Add otherwise wouldn't uh, get. So there are 12 points for her. I think it's pretty clear that we're going with Haywire Protocol here. Serial is nice, Death from Above is also pretty good for her. Volatile Mix not so much, but this here gives us control, potential control of me uh, over mechanical units, and that's kind of the name of the game. Um, he doesn't have enough personal points, and like I said, I don't want to spend anything from the pool. As for Dragonova, hmm. Yeah, let's wait for her. She doesn't have enough um, ab uh, ability points as well. And I think that's pretty much. Oh no, here we go. Uh, War Dog. One of our, uh, one of our uh, really brilliant Grenadiers. I like holo targeting. Kill, uh, kill zone is also nice. Uh, untouchable is absolutely uh, genius. For 12 points, that's a steal. So I'm almost thinking about giving her blast petting and untouchable just to increase the defense. Uh, holo targeting would also be nice to increase her utility with a plus 15% um, uh, to uh, plus 15 to hit. I, probably wouldn't be alive to I mean, Untouchable is really, really good. He was, uh, but let's go for holo targeting and blast petting because she's elsewhere running out of points. 20 points for our gunner. I like it. Talked a bit about it. Serial is great for him. Rupture is great for him. Both of them cost 25 though. So he has the potential to be like this huge kick as gunner. But he would need to have... He would need to have uh, more points to pull this off. Conceal, not bad, giving him the option for a scouting role. Bladestorm, not bad either against chrysalids or melee attacks from mutants. So that's 
okay. I think it's better in this uh, version uh, with the double enemy hit points than it is in a normal version, because uh, there, there are going to be lots of times when you're actually going to be hit with a melee attack, and Bladestorm triggers before you're going to be hit, so sometimes you can just punish and kill the enemy before it actually happens. But I think with his points I'd like to wait and go for Rupture first, as Rupture is really a very, very, very good skill. And that's pretty much it. I am not not disappointed at all. We got some very, very strong skills. I love it. And we're getting rich. Slowly but surely. We're getting rich. Lots of Hilarium. Lots of alien alloys. And I would propose that we're putting someone in here. Wait a second, we can upgrade this. 20 Ilarium Crystals. Nah, that's not... We don't have enough Ilarium to pull this one off. I mean, let's... Let me think that through. We need Ilarium for... We need Elarium for uh, the res. No, we don't need it. We have powered armor research already. We need to. Uh, we need Elarium for the upgrade of powered armor twenty five. So uh, we can't do that. But we can start with eighty supplies and the normal upgrade, uh, so we can free up this guy. And next up is definitely going to be the infirmary. I think I already mentioned. Just reducing our healing time so much is going to be helpful. So we got three engineers left over to clear out alien debris, which I think we're going to do. So two are moving in here, one's moving in here, which means everyone's busy. And we're now down to the lowest floor. Um, one of the things that I would want to buy uh, build is a defense matrix next, because we can still be shot down uh, with the Avenger. Um, and that, that would actually pretty much suck. So it's defense matrix, uh, then we need one for Shadow Chamber, and probably one for Psionics, although I don't even know if we're going to start with Psionics in this game. Not sure yet. There we go. Look at that, guys. Minus two Avenger, uh, Avatar project. Great. So we got a lot of interesting uh, options. And I think before doing anything else, we would want to recruit an additional Reaper. I like the Reapers. It's very seldom to get Reapers. Um, the other option would be this breakthrough research, which I think is also not bad. But let's go with the uh, with the uh, recruitment first. And well, nice. Mox even got an uh, Mox even got a promotion out of uh, out of the last uh, mission. That's not bad. Um, I guess we're sending him on the next mission as well. So might as well just. Go for it. It's a high chance of being wounded. Uh, gets a nice little dodge plus six. That's fine. The reason why I'm sending him on the mission is I need the prime team to take care about a couple of other missions. And plus six dodge, although being pretty decent, um, uh, we can do that uh, later to upgrade uh, to upgrade the uh, the the uh, the team. We need Sirkim now back in uh, back in in his old role. So going into the training center, let's take a look what Zirkim can train. He was the only one that we haven't had a chance to take a look at so far. And look, wow, look at that. No way. That's awesome. He has Rupture, which I just said is just phenomenally good. He has Serial, which uh, no doubt is one of the strongest abilities. And he has Chain Shot, which means on top of his, um, on top of his uh, normal... Uh, rapid shot. He will have a second option to to ch shoot twice, uh, which is awesome. I I'm 
positively very very surprised about uh, about that so what we would want to do first is I'm I'm torn in between chain shot which really is two shots um, and with a shotgun that that can be a lot of damage but I think we're going for rupture here uh, just to to in uh, to increase the synergy with the rest of the team took us a lot of points to go for it but rupture is really worth it so I think that's going to be a huge add-on yeah I'm happy these abilities might pull us out, pull us pull us out of this slump And that was month number seven, guys. Guerrilla operations uh, completed, completed council mission, alien facility destroyed, regions contacted, um, avatar progress reduced, technologies researched, um, avatar project uh, further reduced, alien rulers killed, proving ground uh, projects completed. Very, very good. Um, that was an excellent month, one of the best that we have played so far. And yeah, the Chosens are powering up further. Immunity to melee damage. <laughs> That's not even funny anymore. And uh, she's now going to launch a deadly assault on the Avenger and we can't do shit about that. Uh, he's going to get his final uh, form. We can't interrupt her, so the next month is definitely going to include yet another Avenger defense mission with probably potentially hundreds and hundreds of enemies. Um, this, year is, uh, this year is already bad. This year is super bad. We definitely need to uh, counter the left behind one. I don't know what the other hidden e uh, event is, but this is already pretty bad. New facility is going to be constructed soon, so make no mistake, we're by far, by far not over the hump. Um, instant contact, great. Instant kill for a loss, great. Resistance contacts plus two, very good. Laboratory with 20% extra uh, research, that's fine as well. Resource rewards on all missions are increased by 15%, that's not good enough. Battle Madness, Panic, uh, panic Obsession, Berserk, Shattered only lasts one turn. I think we're going to go with that. Metal Fortitude is not too bad. It just means uh, specifically against like Harbor Wave and uh, stuff um, uh, uh, and similar abilities with, which will um, stun you or panic you for multiple turns. That's basically uh, reducing it to one turn. It has this little icon down there. Well, never mind. Okay, yeah. It's already underway. Nice. 51 and 51. Now we got a lot of Valerium. And a lot of uh, and a lot of alloys now. That was an excellent, really excellent um, upgrade. Let's get some more intel. Okay, 45 extra intel. There are more alien alloys, which we might want to go for. But I'm also thinking about like building the radio station here and continuing to make contact with the rest. We need supplies though in order to pull this off. So let's get our supply drop. Avenger plotting new course. And whilst we're here we might as well visit the black market. Nice. Look at that battlefield medicine. It's going to increase um, the, the healing, which is going to be helpful for us. I'm thinking about uh, what we're going to build next, and I'm going for two experimental ammunitions. Um, 
Oh, we already have that. Well, uh, we're going to go for one further experimental ammunition, mainly because, you know, when we fight against the alien rulers, they are not immune against um, against poison and insidious rounds. And with poisonous rounds or insidious rounds, um, there is a little bit of a of a trick uh, because the the uh, the the actual ammunition will have the same properties that your weapon has. So whenever someone takes poison damage uh, from a weapon that has a repeater, there's a 10% chance for an instant kill. And I want to use that mechanic in order to get uh, over the many, many, many hit points that we're facing. Uh, it's just helpful to, uh, to start with us. All right, back to the topic at hand. We got the supplies now. Shortly flying to the to the black market. So superior focus is really not so good. I was hoping for a superior repeater. I would have probably bought that one. Nope, so that's not helpful. Can sell a couple of sectored corpses and a bit of uh, purifier corpses, and that's pretty much it. So now we're back at 500, um, uh, 500 supplies. Let's check one last thing uh, with the Guerrilla Tactics School because. Um, we could go for uh, an investment here for cool under pressure, which I think we're going to do. It just increases our uh, the competency of our uh, specialists a bit, little bit more. So let's go for that. And to offset that, uh, we're just going to sell a couple more corpses. Yeah, that looks about right. Still 350 left over, enough for um, upgrading. So, as I was saying, we're now going to install the radio station. Basically, to then make contact with the rest here. Ooh, ooh! And there's our next mission, guys. A landed UFO. That's going to be interesting. I love it. So, let's launch this mission, and we're going to see each other in just the next epi episode. If you like what you've seen, uh, don't forget uh, to give it a thumbs up and uh, make a comment down below maybe about the thing that you like the most. So see you in the next time. Bye bye.